The following program is a Town of Colony television production of the William K. Sanford Town Library. Welcome to Getting to Know You. My name is Joe Nash. Today we're going to be talking about Living History Day down at the Tenbrook Mansion in Albany. It's going to be on Sunday, May 3rd, noon to 4. We have with us the Executive Director of the Tenbrook Mansion, Jillian Altenberg, and Carol Ann Margolis also from the Albany County Convention and Visitors Bureau, who you both have been here before, so welcome back. Thank you. Now before we talk about specific events of this Living History Day. I think, I think a lot of people forget how historic Albany is. So why don't you tell us what, what actually, what is this Living History Day? What's the purpose behind it? So it is a free community event. It's kind of the kickoff to our season. So summer- For the mansions, for the mansion. all year, okay. Yeah, so it's really busy for us, tours, summer concerts, mm -hmm. garden talks, and this is our big opening event. And um, we have a theme every year. This year is digging up history. So we're really focusing on genealogy, archeology, span and um, gardening. Okay, this is, well, the theme is digging up history. Digging up okay. history. It's a little more general. But at the same time, um, we really open it to all. It's US sort of like history. an open house kind Anything, of. Anything, yeah. Yes. We, anyone who comes and participates, we give them a lot of flexibility. We, we love it if it has to do with Albany specifically, mm -hmm. you know. We really love to bring in that hometown feel. But at the same time, if you're, if you're bringing anything historical, you know, right. from the United States. And this is a free event, noon to four. It's on the grounds. Mm -hmm. the whole grounds and we're going to talk about some events um, so why don't we start with um, oh this and again Sunday May 3rd and there's there's a lot of information on it'll be on the screen here the Tenbrook Mansion website so why don't you start with um, why don't you start what what's so, what are some of the you got you have some so, you have historical reenactors you're going to have an Gardening, sheep shearing, what go, go down the whole list? My, uh, my favorite is reenactors always. <laughs> so we have this year we have Solomon Northup coming, mm -hmm. and I, I think this is his first year. I think it is. Yeah, so Clifford Oliver is doing that. And then he told people who he, who he was. So Solomon Northup is, was the basis of. 12 Years a Slave, I think he wrote yes, that book movie. and it was turned into a movie. He was from Saratoga. He was a free man that was captured and then sold down south into slavery. Mm -hmm. And I think the movie is about his mm -hmm. escape back. And so we have a local man coming and portraying Solomon. And then they stay, they stay in character. The whole time, yeah. And you can go up and harass and then do whatever <laughs> you like. Um, we also have a World War II camp. So these are a bunch of guys that show up with full World War II gear, tents, artillery. And they set it up. And what's really nice about them is they almost... Um, don't even know anyone else exists. Yeah. So they're in the middle of their camp and doing their thing, and you can go and interact with them, but they're not outwardly coming to you, and you can also just back up and kind of watch them so interact with each other. These aren't World War II veterans. These are actual... Reenactors. Okay, so they're like people do like Civil War. Mm -hmm. okay. So they're going to be dressed like World War II. They'll be or, dressed up. Yeah, okay. they'll have all of their stuff. And then we have, who's always my favorite, is Abraham Lincoln. Okay. And he usually does the Gettysburg Address for us at some time. But, you know, connected to that, it's the 150th anniversary of Abraham Lincoln's funeral procession that came through Albany. So I hope mm -hmm. I hope our Lincoln doesn't get a whiff of that when he's okay. here. <laughs> because we have another gentleman who's going to come with actual Lincoln memorabilia and do a little presentation on the funeral uh, On procession. the same day here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the reenactors, when he's not doing the speech, people can come up and ask him. He, he, he sort of... He'll tell you Lincoln's favorite ice cream. Mm -hmm which is ice cream flavored. <laughs> he will, uh, we have music, Rural Felicity, that does all local, or does all um, time period music, and he will have them sing Dixie, because that was okay. Lincoln's favorite song. You know, he, he stays very much in character, and sometimes he brings along his wife, who will do Mary Todd, okay. or his children, who will be dressed up. Okay. And, just, and they'll just run around and add to it. All right, very good. So that's historical reenactors. And now, f one, one thing this is a family-friendly event. What are some of the things for the kids? Oh, we do, maybe with Carol, you yeah, want to talk well, about Well, I think uh, there's several things for the children. Um, of course, we're going to have uh, gardening, which uh, children really dig it. Uh, I brought a little children's <laughs> size uh, shovel with me. Um, it's going to be uh, heirloom or heritage plants, things that have been planted for centuries in the United States of America. So they're going to get to plant, and uh, we have some beautiful gardens. But mean they can plant it right on the ground they and can, they'll stay? They can, we're going to have them planting okay. some things that they can take home, and I'm also going to have them plant some okay. things at 
right in the ground uh, because hopefully by then, by Living History Day, <laughs> it is nice and warm and everybody is ready to plant and it's not too cold for the seeds. So we are going to have actual experience doing that. They love the sheep shearer. It sounds like, uh, you know, children, how they would love a sheep shearer. Well, you put animals, sheep, and a <laughs> wonderful man who I think is the best sheep shearer in the whole country. He's entertaining, he's educational, and they watch the mm -hmm. sheep go from having a lot <laughs> to a little in a very short time. Yes, I did. They I, hand crank it sometimes. I saw too. the pictures last year, yeah. uh, it was in Times Union. Yeah. So he, he doesn't just cut shear the sheep what's an, does he do another step after taking a um, well more I think it's more the cutting but he does one where you don't use an electric yeah oh, he like old. It with a hand crank but he will also bring some babies which uh, everybody likes to see a cute mm -hmm. little lamb <laughs> and they follow after them and so very a lot of fun pony rides oh, okay. and one of my favorite things is to do the archaeology which is to dig in the backyard of Tembrook Mansion with real archaeologists and get to uh, screen it and you don't get to keep the stuff yeah. but you get to find things and some years I mean they've found all different things we have kids that start at 12 and they don't stop until 4 they mm -hmm. just find it fascinating and so um, I and would you, say those want to so talk about um, we'll talk about this later because you, know you do have the archaeology camp in right. the summer but on on the um, living history day right. Tell the archaeologists, tell where they're from. And oh, they're from Harkin Archaeologists, and they do the major, I think some of the major digs in downtown Albany okay. started by uh, Karen Harkin, a woman. So archaeologists don't just have to be guys. <laughs> and um, they uh, will assist them. It isn't like they just say dig. They yeah. will teach them they how to They show the kids the all the techniques and the, the tools. The techniques, because like that. that information is important. Once you remove things from the ground, mm -hmm. you've sort of basically ruin the historical yeah. context so it's really important for them to do it the right way but it is um, they're mesmerized and they really are great and we will talk about the camp for a little bit older child but even I mean we've had five-year-olds mm. helping with the archaeological dig and they always have done a great job now do they use I know if you do this every year and you have the yeah. camp um, and later in the summer do you use do you dig in the same spots, or are you always finding new areas? Or they are just a little. I think it takes a little longer than people realize because yeah. when you're digging, you do it by section. So mm -hmm. you do it almost maybe like by half foot by half foot. Oh, okay. That's so different. when they're digging every year, they'll make a big rectangle that's maybe like three by six feet. Oh, okay. And they don't move from there because it's more about going down in the yeah. layers. Yeah. And so they'll, they'll move around every year, and they'll find different things. So what are some of the things they have found? Uh, Toys, yeah. porcelain doll faces, really? old bottles. I've I mean, seen a coin. A the coins. Yeah. You have to keep in mind, you know, this house has been around since 1798. Mm -hmm. Portions of this area were probably the trash, you know, where yeah. they were dumping things. A portion that they dig on used to be an outdoor summer kitchen oh, okay. and so. uh, living quarters. So I mean, what you can find is really endless. Oh, okay. And um, you're having a, what did you mention, a petting zoo? You're having, yeah, okay. petting that's zoo? fun. Right. And baby animals, oh, which okay. everyone loves, yeah. always running around. Yeah. And it, the gardens there, uh, which are maintained by the master gardeners, are just beautiful. So if you've never been there, whether you're real young or real old, it's just gorgeous and it's peak time tulips will be out the trees will be blooming and so here you are amongst some trees and flowers and some maintained gardens and some not so maintained and it, it's really okay. picturesque well uh, considering how this winter's going you're you're, you're very optimistic <laughs> I <for that>. am. <laughs> and then what about mansion tours I know during the year people go down and get official tours are there official tours that day or can you just sort of wander around you can or? wander around we'll have docents so tour guides spread okay. all around the mansion mansion so you're welcome to ask them any questions and anything you'd like to know mm -hmm. but really it's more of an open area and then within the house while you're touring there will also be different people stationed around so in our attic will be a paranormal society oh, okay. that does you know different yeah. investigations in the house so if you want to go and get spooked you can go up to the third floor and find <laughs> out about them um, usually the second floor we'll have tour guides around that will answer any questions and show you around and we'll have um, people knitting and, okay. and a, on rabbit. The first floor. a rabbit on the it. first floor are, are, are they in a costume or from that era. The one or? with the rabbit is she actually makes um, thread mm -hmm. out okay. of her rabbit's hair. So she brings a rabbit right. and she does yeah. it and, and, 
and, and does it in front of you. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't hurt the rabbit, so no one's unhappy. It's you know very gentle, and you can pet the rabbit too. Now you mentioned the paranormal society. Is the Tenbrook Mansion known for having a ghost or two? Or some people think so. <laughs> I know the Capitol is known for. I'm not going to say no to that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I slept one night there, and there were a lot of noises. I don't know if there were ghosts, but I, <laughs> I think old houses have a lot of creaking stairs, yes. and uh, it happened to snow the night I was there, so it was now, quite exciting. Uh, I'm not sure if a lot of people know this, but I'm not sure if it's a Timbrook Mansion or down the street. It was a stop yeah. on the Underground Railroad. And now, is there a thing that you're going to be yeah. going down and seeing that? So or the Stephen so? Harriet Myers residence, which is about a block up Livingston okay. Avenue, was actually um, Stephen Harriet Myers lived there. They helped out with the Underground Railroad. It mm -hmm. was a stop during the Underground Railroad. They ran an abolitionist newspaper called the North Star. You know, they're very kind of radical abolitionists of their time. And the Underground Railroad History Project of the Capital Region, Paul and Mary Liz Stewart, now own the house and are updating it, and they will be doing a tour. Okay. And that'll be at a certain scheduled time, which will come out on our flyers and be okay. on our website. Right. Uh, Julian, do we have the King Place? Is that going to be we open? We do. We Is also that? have a really great exhibit on the Brothers, which was uh, a, civil's right, a civil rights movement during the 60s. Mm -hmm. And some people compare them to the uh, the Black Panthers, but they were actually about six months earlier, which is really okay. interesting. And there's a whole documentary and exhibit up there that was put together by us and SUNY and the Underground Railroad. Is it History in Project. your house? Or is and that's in our other location on King's Place, okay. which is on Swan Street, which will be open as well. And this is from the... This is this group's from the sixties, you said. Yeah. Okay. They're actually the reason we have trash pickup in the city of Albany and housing oh, okay. reform. Really? Yeah. All right. yeah, a lot so of people don't important. know about them. A very interesting exhibit. Well, people can learn a lot. It's that's why it's called Living History Day. No. <laughs> digging, <laughs> digging. So, and thing. then you're going to have music. Um, you mentioned briefly, but can you talk a little bit about the group and what kind of music it is? Yeah. So, Rural Felicity comes in full costume, and they do all period music, From all the, uh, like 18th century, okay, and uh, some 19th century like sea shanties. Oh, They're right. really fun. Um, Leakin usually hangs out with them a lot. And then we also, at one point, will have um, African drumming, which okay. is a class that's being done at the barn right now, which is in our neighborhood. And so they're interacting with us. They're going to come down with drums. They're going to do a whole dance. Okay. We're also hoping to have a school choir yeah. there as well. Okay. And then I see on the web page, maybe you could talk a little bit about this. Are you going to have some local vendors um, from local farms and crafts and stuff, or what? We do. We'll have um, Elderberry Mary. I don't know if you know her. She no. sells at a lot of local places, so she does all jams and butters. Uh, we'll have Ruth Ann Price, who sells local herbs and jams, and a lot of people who are coming. A lot of times we have the Civil War Roundtable, okay. and they'll they'll sell goods at their oh, okay. tables as well. So it's a whole day of just. The whole grounds yeah. will be yeah. covered with with um, kind of okay. and some food. Uh, oh, there'll be food vendors, of course. Some uh, donuts is I don't know if you've heard. Yeah, of cider belly. Oh, okay. They're the new donuts in town. If you haven't had them, they're delicious, and they are going to provide us with some and some cider. And uh, if you, I guess if you stand out long enough, it might be hard cider. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, how many years has this been going on? Do you? I know you. <sighs> I mean, oh. it's been like 10 or 20 years I've been doing Oh, yeah. Right. At least. Yeah. At least At 10 least. years. So. Okay. And do you usually get good crowds? I would say we usually get you know, upwards of four or 500 people. Okay. Oh, yeah. good. And it's... Um, the whole event is free. Is it because they're parking down there, or just we do? We have a parking lot, which oh, is okay. great. You can access it from Livingston Avenue or Tenbrook Place. Okay. Part of it's usually blocked up by the ponies, but um, mm -hmm. we do have we have lots of parking. There will be hot dogs and hamburgers okay. for sale, mm -hmm. so you can really come and spend the whole time there. Bathrooms on site. Okay, excellent. So have we we're going to talk about some other things, but before we do, is there anything else about Living History Day? Sunday, May third, noon to four, Tenbrook Mansion. We just spoke about all the events. Did we forget anything? Just that I would keep in mind that really it's it's something that everybody can enjoy. Yeah. I know that I'm always pulling my friends in, and they're blown away that this yeah. this house is hiding here in Albany. Yeah. And like I stuff you can said at the beginning, I think a lot of people forget um, mm. how historic it Albany is. is. Not just Albany, the Paternal Mansion, Alexander Hamilton was connected yeah. with it, and yeah. you know it's Absolutely. everywhere. And we'll have we're um, inviting the other historical societies. I know Bethlehem Historical Society is going to be there, okay. so there's going to be a lot of other tables where you can find out. Not only can you go and have fun and pet the sheep and do all this, but you can also see all of the other resources that are in Albany. Um, hopefully, we'll have somebody from the DAR that's mm -hmm. helping out. You know about signing up for the DAR, Daughters of 1812, and all of the the rich culture and resources yeah, we good. have in Albany. Yeah. And along with that, um, we're going to have information how you can uh, find out about your ancestry. So not only the DAR, not everybody's uh, 
you know, family was, you know, fought in the American Revolution. A lot of people came as immigrants at a later time. So we're going to have information for, for you to develop your family trees, okay. to dig up your history. And so that will be provided. Okay. So it won't just be digging in the garden and digging uh, <laughs> in, the in the dirt. We will have digging up your family history. Okay. And it can be pretty fascinating. Um, All right. So that's, again, Sunday, May 3rd. So uh, we, as long as you're here, Carol. Yes. And Carol is, like I said at the beginning, she's from the Albany County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Two days before the Living History Day is May 1st, yes. also known as May Day. Why don't you tell people oh, what's going to be going on there in well, Albany? We, not at the mansion, though. No, not yeah. at the mansion. But, this is going to be in Washington Park. We do like to get reservations ahead of time to call the Albany Visitors Center. And this or is Albany Friday, May 1st. Friday, May 1st. We are doing a walk on May Day through the tulips. <laughs> okay. So I don't know that we'll tiptoe, but we're going to be walking <laughs> through. Hopefully we'll get great weather. And it's a week before Tulip Fest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There won't be all the vendors. It's going to just be gorgeous. I think this year the You'll be flowers, able to see all the tulips as opposed to See the to tulips. The <laughs> we will have, um, I will be involved, um, a horticulturist, and I will give my insight into the horticultural mm -hmm. aspects of tulips. The city gardener, who does a wonderful job, uh, will have even some of the gardeners who plant individual beds with certain flower color um, will be there. And it's a walking tour. We're going to meet at Moses, and we're we're going to walk around the area, and again, there shouldn't be all the uh, other yes. distractions. What, uh, to what time is that starting? It's going to be one o'clock on May Day. May 1st. And you're going to go through Washington the whole, Park. or wherever tulips are? The Where whole, the tulips okay. are, which is closest to yeah. Moses. I mean, the park itself is huge. It was designed by Frederick Law Olmsted, the famous landscape architect who did Central Park mm -hmm. and other things. And um, so it's a very historical park, but the tulips really have so much you know, to do with our history. And this is just one week before the, the actual festival. tulip fest when you're going to have thousands of your best friends. Now, every year when they have the tulip festival. I'm always amazed at this. Tell us the number of tulips that will be in Washington Park. Well, they plant <laughs> over two, I can't tell you Washington Park, but they purchase and they plant, the city gardeners, over 200,000 mm -hmm. tulips okay. each year. That's a lot of tulips. Are they all the same sort of kind? Or? No, they so you, are different. So during the tour, you'll be yes. expounding on oh, all the these. different varieties. And they do have a few things besides. They have fritillaria, and you'll see some muscari, mm -hmm. grape, hyson, a few other things besides the tulips. But there definitely are early, mid, and late. There are some that are very simple, you know, old-fashioned mm -hmm. tulip. And then there are some that look like peonies, and, and the colors now that they have come out with are amazing. And so to me, I uh, have gone once to the Netherlands to see the Kukanoff Gardens. If you can't go to the Netherlands, the, next, the best next best thing, thing is come yeah. to Albany, New York, and you will not be disappointed. Well, I think, was it, I can't remember when. When was the mania when tulips were actually yes. used as currency? Or yeah, single, or single tulip bulb that people would be willing to give up their house, a wagon, you know, cheese, bread, whatever, <laughs> all for a single tulip. And uh, now I don't think, it, <laughs> you probably, it depends on who you get them from, but the company that they get a lot of them from in the Netherlands is called Color Blends and just, just so all these quality. Planted all the, every year. All these tulips in Washington Park, they're, they are, they're all from Holland? They're all, oh, I think all of them are for Holland. I don't okay. want, but I'm pretty sure they're all from the Netherlands. And they replant every year the ones that finish blooming. They do sell them um, at a much discounted yeah. price. But the best tulips are the ones that are freshly planted each fall. And okay. they overwinter. And I can expect probably by the late April through mid-May, you'll have your peak tool. So that's that's going to be 1 o'clock yeah. on May 1st, May Day, and you said you're meeting at Moses. Do you, do you think most people watching knows, knows what that means? Mo I think Moses Statue in <laughs> Washington Park, if you're from the greater Albany area, okay. that is a meeting I'm point. Sure. But call the Visitor Center, 434-0405, <laughs> to reserve a spot. I think most people know where the Moses Statue is okay. by the fountain. But it should so, be fun. We'll go back, you know, now that we've covered May 1st and May 3rd, we'll just go back briefly, um, Jillian. You were talking about 
on, on the Living History Day archaeology, but during the summer, you actually have for kids an, a whole archaeology camp. What, can you, do you have the dates? And I the, do. It's oh. July 13th through 17th, okay. and it's a week-long camp, camp, daily camp, so I think it's about 8.30 a.m. to 3.30 mm -hmm. p.m. It's great. We have Harkin archaeologists that come out, and they do it with the kids. And so this year we are digging on the Thomas Elkins property, which is right next to Stephen Harriet Myers, about mm -hmm. a block up from Livingston Avenue. He was a dentist. He was an inventor. He was an abolitionist, a world traveler. I mean, an African American mm -hmm. man. So of his time, you know, very much ahead of the curve. And the kids are digging up on his property and they each, they go through a study of all the parts of being an archaeologist, what it means, what to do. They dig in the property, they go down inch by inch, they each have their own little space. Um, they clean it off, they classify the documents and they do a presentation at the end so of the So they learn, parents. they learn again like, like on, there'll be a small, small, a small version of this on Living History Day, but they learn all the techniques and the all tools. All the techniques and you know, it's very important to make sure you know what mm -hmm. section of dirt you got the, um, artifact. the artifact from and everything so you can date it and what you can do and they found I mean amazing things and they'll find thousands of now have they worked year. at this this location before they did they worked last year but they really only dug up maybe a quarter of it and they found an entire um, brick floor that had been hidden underneath the okay. like, foundation of it they found lots of bottles they found um, really cool 19th century uh, dentist tools because he was a dentist so they found okay. the actual tools he would have used and what how what ages is this for? Is it's for sixth to twelfth yeah. grade. Going okay. enter, entering the sixth grade, and we do offer scholarships. Okay. So we take no more than twenty kids, but we do offer scholarships. First preference going to Arbor Hill children, but you know we're okay. always open to anyone and then, sending it in. Is there information on the website? Yeah, it's all on our website already. You can check it out. It and I know times application. I know from years past, from talking to you and your predecessor, um, this is always a popular, a popular. It event. is. It okay. is archaeology camp and Carol. Were you, have you been involved in that? I have been uh, involved in helping. I, I'm not sure. I'm not a lead, but I have helped. One summer I actually assisted, and, and it was just a fantastic experience for the students. And uh, I highly recommend it because it's real. It's not, you know, sometimes you go to camps, and yeah. it's like a make-believe uh, fossil pit or make-believe yeah. archaeology thing. This is the real well, stuff. Well, it must be good if kids can actually talk to real archaeologists. Yeah. They're not just people Absolutely. watching them, you know, they're actually yeah, can ask yeah. them and they show them how to do everything. And what's great about this is, you know, it is real. The archaeologists actually then, they take all the artifacts and they use them in, in their, their studies. Oh, okay. So, I mean, in a way, it's helping Harkin okay. because they're getting a little bit of, you know, so young who, labor. Yeah. So who discovered the brick floor last year? One, one of, of the, the kids? Or yeah. the kids. Yeah. It's yeah. all the kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They have to work hard. You have to be patient. I mean, and it I isn't... Think you know, it doesn't all of a sudden, oh, yeah. there we find it. I mean, it does take hard work. And, then, and it, I think it rained three days last year. We had muddy kids digging yeah. down. And it's all day. And, and this is rain and shine, by the way. Yeah. Okay. Both, both things. And what was the dates again? July 13th through 17th. July 13th. Okay, there's information on the website. So, Living History Day, Sunday, May 3rd, noon to 4. It's like an, a free open house at the, at the mansion. There's all kinds of events that we just talked about. Meet at Moses on May 1st. You can see all the tulips. For, right, there'll be our tour. And for next we'll have a good, Yeah, it'll be the week before the, the tulip festival. Before, so you can get to see perfect. them before. And then all, you can come back when all the people are there. But I think it'll, yeah. it'll be focused on gardening, Washington Park. It'd probably be tulips. nicer to see them before they get all... It really is nice. You can really look at them, and it, it's just I, I think that's one of the nicest things you can do in Albany okay. is go through the tulips. So nice Very park. good. So, Jillian, um, anything else over the summer that you want to mention since you're here? Uh, just to keep in mind that we always do garden talks and teas. All so, summer. Okay. Yep, all summer. So in June, I think we have one on the shakers, on the herbs and gardening. And okay. In July, we're doing one on Monet the gardener. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's an outdoor lecture followed by a tea inside. I think it's usually about $15. And that will all be on our website. Okay. Oh, confetti. Oh, and we're doing, last year we did confetti theater in our gardens. They did Shakespeare. Uh, confetti Stage Inc. is a local Oh, yeah, they're down group. by, um, yeah. down by the... The, re the hotel there. I, I think they they do a lot of their plays at the Masonic Lodge. What you know what they're doing this year? Yeah. At our at our place, it's the first two weekends in August, and they're doing Robin Hood. Okay, it's gonna be the, so cool. A, is it a family version or the? I think they it will definitely be family okay. friendly, but I think they're aging it up a little so adults will enjoy it too. So mm -hmm. what have they done before? Do you? Last year they did um, the Tempest. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And the, 
do they just do certain, are the performances only there or is it part of their whole summer thing where they yeah. just come up? They do them all over, but the one, we host one okay. every year in our gardens. Mm -hmm. And we usually have an opening right. night and then the first Sunday is a free one for right. the neighborhood. So it's Robin Hood, okay. Yeah. Robin Hood this year. All right, so mm -hmm. that should be up by the summer on mm -hmm. your website. So there's a lot of information on the website. A lot of information. Yeah. I didn't, Great things. There's a lot yeah. going on down there. All right, very good. And Carol, yeah. as long as you're here, oh, and I hear you may be retiring soon, <laughs> Albany County Convention and Visitors Bureau, any besides the Tula Festival, anything right. over the summer you want to just throw out here? Because this will be on all during yeah. April and May. Well, we have a lot of different things uh, to know. We do have a planetarium, the Henry Hudson oh, Planetarium, right. the third Saturday every month, 11 o'clock for really young kids, like 3 to 7. Anybody older, 8 all the way through, you know. Down at the convention center. At, at the visitor center okay. at Quackabush Square, and um, those are $3 a seat, but they're really great mm -hmm. and uh, very, very popular. And then um, during the different uh, break weeks and summertime we usually have a couple different uh, free events always different topics and we encourage people to come it's we're open seven days a week and there's no charge to come to the visitors center so very good, good place to go well I think after this winter <laughs> we're filming this and <laughs> it's still March here and it's still terrible cold out people probably can't will be ready to bust out to go to all these events so. I think so and we so, really uh, I think the Tenbrook mansion is just so one of the lovely places and there are other historical sites and I encourage people to come and enjoy very good okay well thanks again Carol, your fifth, fifth or sixth time here. Jillian, thanks for coming again. Of course. And we will see you next time on Getting to Know You. 